Hey guys, it's Matchy here with a Clip Studio Paint tutorial for you all. This will hopefully be a quick tip here. It's going to be about lettering in Clip Studio Paint. Um, basically, it's about word bubbles and getting a nice, imperfect ellipse word bubble. If you take a look at some of my older tutorials, you'll notice that I like to use Illustrator to do all of my lettering, which is um, still kind of true, except for Clip Studio Paint has gotten so advanced now that I can just pretty much do everything in the, in the software, which is, you know, the rough sketch, the inking, coloring, just pretty much everything. There's, well, not pretty much everything, everything. So the only thing that I didn't want to do in Clip Studio was the lettering because I just love the control that I have with Illustrator, but I got to the point where I was like, I just really want to streamline this. Let's get the lettering done in Clip Studio so that I can, and it's helpful also for the layouts to be able to do the lettering right there where I'm doing the art and just, it was just going to streamline everything if I could just do it all in one software. So my previous experience with lettering in Clip Studio was all the way back in Manga Studio 4 and I discovered that things have changed quite a bit um, from Manga Studio 4 to Clip Studio Paint slash Manga Studio 5. Um, and it wasn't exactly what I was expecting and it actually is it's one of the few things in Clip Studio that I'm not entirely happy with. I love this software. It's my favorite. It's my go-to for drawing. I recommend it to everybody who asks about drawing software, but I'm not totally happy with the lettering system. So let's jump in the time machine and take a look at how it worked in Manga Studio 4 so you can see what I was expecting. Okay, we jumped back about, I don't know what, like a decade? Maybe not that much. Okay, here we are in Manga Studio 4, which is what would become Clip Studio. I think they were calling it Clip Studio elsewhere, but in, in the US we were calling it Manga Studio. Pronounce that terribly, so you'll probably hear me say it like five different ways throughout this tutorial. So anyway, I've set up some sample text. I'm not gonna go into the type tool because this is not a Manga Studio 4 tutorial. I just really wanna show you what I was expecting. This is more informative, so I just come over here to the type layer, double click, and you get into the character settings. This is where you would edit your characters or whatever, but over here there's a tab called Dialog Balloon Settings, and you come over here to select di Dialog Balloon for Materials, and this is where you select all from your various Dialog Balloon shapes, and look at all these shapes! Oh my gosh! I mean, it goes on forever. So I would probably pick something like this ellipse C, which is a nice non-perfect ellipse. And I would just make it the shape that I want. Oops. And then okay. And that's pretty much how I get what I want. Um, so I was, when I was in Clip Studio, I was expecting basically the same the same principle. Which, by the way, you can add a tail to this and everything too. Just to show you, I can. So there you go. So that's pretty much what I was expecting. So let's jump back in the time machine and go back to the future and see what we have in Clip Studio Paint today. Okay, here we are on a fresh canvas. Let's see, I'll go over here to the type tool, type in some sample text. And I come over here to my balloon options and what? I have three options here. I have an ellipse balloon, you know, which is a perfect ellipse, which again, I, I don't like perfect ellipse balloons. So I need an imperfect ellipse is basically what I usually go for. I think the ellipse looks too mechanical. I don't think it fits the text quite as well. So I, I really want a, a shape that is not the ellipse in perfection. <laughs> so, um, so then I have like this curve balloon thing, which is kind of like a Bezier curve thing, which is, I can kind of get close to what I want there. So that's, we're gonna come back to that actually because that's gonna be part of the solution. And then I have this balloon pen, which I'm using my mouse and I don't have the settings right, but basically 
you do that and it becomes balloon material, which I probably should go into settings and let's see. This will give you a better representation of what that's supposed to look like. Let's... So kind of like this, so Ooh. yeah, which I could do with better with a pen tool, but that's that's my mouse drawing, so forgive me. So then there's also this thing, it's called Flash, which is, I think, you know, this kind of thing. Which I would, really it's black, I don't even understand that. Maybe, maybe if I do this, it's different. Yeah. So you can, there's some options there. But there's, there's nothing, there's no real word balloons. So this one's called Sea Urchin. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's it that's and this is like what five options over here so you have like six different shapes to pick from basically so no bueno but here's what i came up with as a solution because i really desperately did not want to have to export a file to, to illustrator and then comp it together in photoshop or whatever didn't want to do it so the solution i found is actually to use the curve balloon tool but um, just be really precise about how I draw out the balloon. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to draw a rectangle. Well, not I'm not going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to lay a rectangle of points around the text. So I'm going to go start here at the bottom corner and go straight up to about just the same distance from the letters. Drop a point over here and I'm really trying to just align it so that the points if you drew a straight line would make a perfect rectangle and there you go I got this could be a little bigger um, I might try I would probably in life do this again so I'd have a little more breathing room for the letters but um, well, let's just do it let's just do it um, but basically you get a nice imperfect ellipse shape out of this and you can get pretty precise it's a little it's a little wonky but it's you know I think this is a lot better than a um, perfect ellipse so that's how I achieve this shape in here with and and I do it quickly without having to make a lot of adjustments because at first I was trying it and I was making tons of adjustments and just trying just laboring over it and I thought this is not working but this this I do I did a whole I don't know I've done four pages with this so far and it just really works pretty well for me so then you can just go over here to balloon tail and I'll show you the settings I use spline you can do a straight line you can do a polyline which is more of an angled line or you can do a spline so here's a straight line pretty much what you'd expect pretty useful then uh, here's the polyline polyline is if you go straight and then you click and there and then until you double click it goes see I left a little tail on there so that's pretty cool and then what I usually use is a spline and I just kind of leave it on spline actually which is um, so say you do a straight and then you turn and it'll curve for you and then you just double click and it wants to make another one. So that's cool. When, even if you leave it like this, if you just go straight and double click, it'll make a straight one. So that's pretty much it. That is, uh, the, that is how I do my lettering now in my comics. I don't know if this excites anybody. Um, I just really don't like the, the perfect ellipse and I wanted more options for shapes and I searched for ways to make different shapes and the only way you can do it is using those specific lettering tools in here because you can't make your own materials for this for some for whatever reason. Um, it's unfortunate. Even in the vector tools, the vector tools, if you draw an outline it has to fill in with a color. You can't just do an outline with a different color inside. So. So it's a little bit limiting, um, and this is kind of just my workaround to get the shape that I want. And um, 
You can get different cool shapes with it if you play with it, but I just wanted something that I could just do every single time, 100% the same, and get an expected result, and this worked for me. So hopefully that is helpful to some people, and also maybe gave you a little bit of a demo on the text tool and how to make word balloons in Clip Studio Paint. Um, thanks for going with me on the time machine, and... Um, yeah, thanks for, for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, or you want to see some of my traditional art time-lapse paints, or probably whatever else I'm going to do digitally in the future, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm also uh, very active on Instagram. My name there is matchy.art. I encourage you to follow me there. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.